Hello everyone! So, today, I am here to finally, finally, do a re remake my Haruki Murakami video. If you guys somehow don't know, my most viewed video ever, ever, is my where to start with Haruki Murakami video. And I can't tell you how many people comment on that video every single day, and I am sick of it. I appreciate people's comments, like, nice comments, but most of the comments are pretty rude. And I am so sick of that video having so many views and having so many comments on it, because most of them are commenting on the fact that I said I suggest Haruki Murakami for an older audience, and everyone's like, well, I was like 12 when I read it. I'm like, that's great for you, I don't care. Um, and th then other people being like, well, have you read this one by him? Have you read this one by him? Have you read this one by him? Because in that video, I had only read like a couple of his books, and I thought I was allowed to make a recommendations video about it, but no, you have to read all of the books before you're allowed to make a recommendations video. So that is what I am here to do today, because guess what? I finally finished his novel collections. So I am here to talk about all of Haruki Murakami's novels. I believe there are 13 of them and I have read every single one of them. I will be talking about every single one in a little bit of detail before giving you guys a recommendation on where to start with Haruki Murakami. If you guys would like any um, more detail on my thoughts on a book, I have an entire playlist that I will leave down below or linked somewhere on the screen that you guys can watch that I go- I have reviewed every single one of his books. So. And this is of course my opinion. I know that my most disliked video that I still get hate comments on every single day is my Norwegian Wood review. It has so many dislikes. I'm sorry I didn't like Norwegian Wood. I'm just gonna say that now. I didn't like Norwegian Wood. Um, I'm so sorry to all of the hipsters who are like, who have only ever read Norwegian Wood and watched my review and decide to just like it. I'm so sorry. These are my opinions on his books. This is my opinion on where to start. Don't watch the video if you don't want my opinion. Um, but yeah, I mean, on YouTube I'm kind of known for my Haruki Murakami reviews and kind of known for my Haruki Murakami discussions. So, um, I mean, I hope you guys take my recommendation seriously, and I'm sorry if I sound like such a bitch right now, I just can't tell you how many hate comments I get every single day on my reviews or my Haruka Murakami videos. So, I am finally here to just make an update on my thoughts on Haruki Murakami. If you guys didn't know, he is my all-time favorite author. Um, again, I've read all 13 of his novels and I'm working on his short stories. So, again, if you don't, don't want my opinion, you can leave. Like I said, he's written 13 novels. I have all of them right over there. I'm gonna go th I'm gonna go empty that shelf, bring them over here, and we're gonna talk about each book in a little bit of detail, and then I'm gonna tell you guys where to start. Before anyone asks, the editions that I have with these spines and these covers are the Vintage Classics editions, um, or just Vintage editions. If you look them up on Amazon, these are the editions that are shown. Now, I'm going to be talking about them in the order of publication, um, in Japan. So I'm going to be going through them publication order. Which means the first one that we are going to start with is Hear the Wind Sing and Pinball 1973. Um, these are the first two kind of novellas that Murakami ever wrote, um, and though I didn't necessarily love them, I do think it is a very entertaining thing to read just to see where Haruki Murakami starts. These two books are also considered the first two books in the Rat series, um, which consists of these two novels, Dance 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 and A Wild Sheep Chase. Um, and yes, I believe I gave Hear the Wind Sing 2.5 out of 5 stars and Pinball 1973 2 out of 5 stars just because I didn't necessarily enjoy them that much. I thought they were pretty boring. Um, but again, very interesting to see where Haruki Murakami kind of started and especially interesting to see where the Rat series started just because um, the Rat series gets crazy. The next book is the third book in the Rat series, which is A Wild Sheep Chase, and this is one of my favorite books by Haruki Murakami. So a big jump from his first two books to this book. Um, I absolutely love this book. Um, this The Rat series kind of uh, from this book into Dance 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 kind of go hand in hand. The first two books, they do definitely go into these books, but not as much. This book, we start with the unnamed narrator and kind of his adventure, A Wild Sheep Chase, um, to find 
the fact that he published a photo with a sheep in it in an article and a man wants him to find that sheep. Um, this book is ridiculous. It is hilarious. Um, I think Haruki Murakami's humor is probably the best in this book. I was literally laughing out loud several times and it is also very self-aware which I always think is hilarious. Um, there were a couple breaking the fourth wall kind of thing um, and I could literally just see the character like looking into the camera like he's on the office sort of thing. Um, um, this one is just a joy to read and I really really enjoyed it. This is probably like, again, probably like my second favorite Haruki Murakami book. And then we go on to Hard World Wonderland and The End of the World by Haruki Murakami. This is the one that the review, I kind of want to just redo the entire review because I read this book too early. I read this book, I think it was like my third or fourth Haruki Murakami, and I just simply didn't understand what was going on. And once I had my discussion in the comments of my review video about this book, I enjoyed this book so much more. I bumped it up from like a 2 star to a 3.5 just from the discussion that I had about it and finally understanding what was going on. This book follows two different parallel worlds where in one we are kind of seeing the end of the world and this mad scientist and this man who's trying to stop the end of the world and in the other there is a man who is living in a kind of fantastic world. There's unicorns, there's stuff like that, and there is a parallel between them. Um, my whole thing was I didn't see the parallel at first, but now I do, and this is definitely due for a reread just because I need to really grasp that. But I do really enjoy this book now that I understand what was going on, but not necessarily one that I would suggest starting with. The next one, ooh, ah, ooh ah, Norwegian Wood. Um, again, I already said I did not like this book. It is not my least favorite though. I do think it has redeeming qualities. Literally the last um, paragraph of this book brings it from like a two star to a three star for me. This last paragraph of this book. I reread that constantly and I just get shivers. But the rest of the book, mediocre. Um, I just, I don't like contemporary books that much. Um, I am in, I'm in Haruki Murakami for the magical realism and the weirdness. This is much more of a contemporary novel about a man who, um, his best friend has recently died and he goes and visits his friend's girlfriend who he used to be in love with and might still be in love with and she is in a mental hospital I believe. Um, but yeah, a lot of people love this book. I'm in the minority. I know that. And next we are on to the fourth and final book of the Rat series, which is Dance Dance Dance. This is one I see a lot of people starting with and I don't really know why because it is the last book in the series. Um, but this one is probably... I had a lot of mixed thoughts on this. I think I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Um, I really, really enjoyed it, but it also was really, really weird. And it, um, also, I have had quite a discussion with people in the comment section of one of the biggest things that bothers me in this book is the fact that I think it's really creepy, the relationship between the unnamed narrator and the girl in this book. There's a young girl that he um, talks with and it like kind of takes care of because her parents aren't around that much and he always called himself her boyfriend and I always thought that was really weird but that seems to be a translation error because people who have read this book in other languages say that is not a thing so um, that is a big part that I thought was really creepy. Um, again another kind of goes right off of a wild sheep chase. I really enjoyed it. Magical realism, absolute weirdness. This book is the weirdest, not maybe the weirdest, but definitely up there with one of the weirdest books I've ever read. <laughs> Next is my only contemporary Haruki Murakami that I really, really liked, and that is South of the Border, West of the Sun by Haruki Murakami. This is a very, very short little novel, and it is about the only character of Haruki Murakami's that is like successful and not depressed. And it was a breath of fresh air to read about him. Um, it is about a man who runs a very successful um, bar in Tokyo, I believe, and one day one of his elementary school crushes suddenly walks back into his life. Um, even though he is married with kids and stuff, he kind of decides to go on this little adventure with her. This is, again, pretty contemporary. There's not much magical realism in it, um, but I still really, really enjoyed it. And again, very different characters from her Murakami's normal characters. And of course, next up we have my favorite Haruki Murakami novel. This definitely is due for a reread, um, and that is The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami. I don't know, I never know how to explain this book to people. This book is about Toro Okada, who... <sighs> this entire book happens because he loses his cat, and he wants to go find the cat. 
and it takes him into wells, it takes him into dreams, it makes him meet these weird people all throughout his life, or actually not even throughout his life, I think this book is only like a couple weeks long, um, and basically all he wants to do is find a cat, um, and yeah, I mean, this is a masterpiece. Definitely my favorite of Haruki Murakami's novels. Next up is my least favorite Haruki Murakami novel out of the entire stack, and that is Sputnik Sweetheart. I only give this a 2 out of 5 stars. It is another contemporary one, which again, I do not enjoy his contemporary nearly as much as his mag magical realism books. Um, I just did not see the point of this book at all. I really like the LGBT aspects. We do follow a character who, er, we see a character who is a lesbian, um, and yeah, I mean, I didn't like the characters, I didn't really get the plot, the ending made no sense to me. So, yeah, I've discussed this with a lot of people, and like, the ending made no sense to me. I understand what happened, but I don't understand why he would write it the way he did. Um, again, I'm very much in the minority, I know a lot of people this is their absolute favorite of his, um, but it just wasn't for me, in the same way that Norwegian Wood was not for me. Next up is, an, is one of my favorites, and that is Kafka on the Shore by Hiroki Murakami. This book, oh, this book is so good. It is about a young boy who runs away from home and is kind of trying to live on his own, and he is kind of running away from his problems and his father, um, and this boy, he meets um, a great character. What was his name? His name? Oshima? Yeah, and there is the boy named Crow, all of that stuff, and then we have Nakata, who is a, as a child, like, fainted, and then he can talk to cats, and it rains fish, and it's crazy, and their parallel worlds collide one day, and it's, it's, it's a crazy book. I love it a lot. Another one of my favorites, we have After Dark by Hiroki Murakami. I'm so happy Hiroki Murakami did this book, because this is a it all takes place in one day book. Um, I love those kinds of books. Um, and in this book we follow a young girl, Mari, and she is waiting at a Denny's. <laughs> um, and a man comes over and he insists that he knows her big sister, her little sister, and it kind of takes her on this weird journey that she like helps a woman from a brothel or a hotel or something and then there is also the chapters of her sister who is in a very deep sleep and it's a very very weird book and I enjoyed it so so much. This one I think I gave like a 5 out of 5 stars. I stopped doing star ratings. If it was my favorite I gave it a 5 out of 5 star. And then we have The Beast. The Beast of 1Q84 by Hiroki Murakami. This is three books in one. Um, again, another one of my favorites of perfect 5 out of 5 stars. Actually, not perfect. I have quite a few questions about this book and I just kind of want more pages of it to answer those questions. But this book follows two characters, Omame and Tango, who they were friends kind of, or they were just in the same class in elementary school, and they both we're kind of in love with each other, um, but yeah, so Omame goes over a bridge and suddenly goes into a different version of her own world, which is why it's called 1Q84, um, rather than 1984, because she's not totally sure when or where she is, um, and yeah, this entire book is crazy, it's really hard to describe, I don't know why people call it a dystopian, I don't really consider it a dystopian, but yeah, this, it has little people, like, climbing out of dead corpses of goats, there's a cult, it's crazy. And then we have my most recent read, which is The Colorless Sakura Tazaki and His Years of Pilgrimage, which this follows a man named Sakura Tazaki, who during high school he was friends with all people who had colors in their name. Um, blue, red, white, and gray, I believe, and he was the only one without a color, so he was called Colorless Sakura. Um, and after high school, he decided to go away from his hometown where all of his friends were staying, and he went to Tokyo um, for college, and when he returned one day, all of his friends would not speak to him anymore. So he is now 10 years later or something crazy, and he has finally decided that he wants to know what happened. Um, so he goes and talks to all of his friends and kind of tries to figure out what this story was and why they all dropped him off the face of the planet um, 10 years previous. Um, this was a contemporary version of Haruki Murakami, but I also think it is the best, like, kind of splurge of his magical realism and contemporary, and I really, really enjoyed this. I give it, like, a 4 out of 5 stars. It was a really good read. So those are all of my basic ideas on his novels, and now I am going to get into my recommendations video, um, part of this video. If you guys wanted to know, I actually wrote an entire essay for my college, um, about this topic, and my teacher thought it was great, so I'm gonna kinda go off of that. It is basically in the same format as 
my previous recommendations video. And that is people who are already familiar with the weird and the wacky of magical realism and maybe like things like fantasy um, and are kind of familiar with world building and kind of figuring out how other books work that aren't in our own world. And then on the other hand are people who much prefer contemporary novels. So we're gonna get into it. But a difference in this video is I'm also going to be telling you guys the books I do not suggest starting with. Also, if you guys wanted to know what order I read them in, I actually decided to go in publication order from Japan um, after I read his first three, big three, The Wind of Bird Chronicle, Kafka on the Shore, and Norwegian Wood. I decided to go in chronological publication order. Um, I do suggest that. I thought it was a lot of fun kind of watching Haruki Murakami grow as an author. Again, like starting with his first couple of books that I didn't think was very good at all. Um, leading up into 1Q84 was crazy. I do really highly recommend that, um, except for the fact that I don't think his first two are that great. So maybe start with a different book and then go into chronological order after you've decided that you like him, but that's what I did. So I'm going to start with the people who like fantasy, sci-fi, magical realism already, and kind of understand the makings of reading a book that don't always make sense or are different from our own world. The book that I always suggest people starting with is Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. I think this one is probably one of the weirdest of his books, but also the easiest to understand. I This was one of the only books that all, I still really, really enjoyed it, but I could kind of figure things out as I went and I wasn't waiting for him to explain it. Um, so I really highly recommend starting with this one. I think it's great um, and it's also very very popular so there are a lot of people who have read it and it makes it a lot easier to talk to people about it um and yeah i mean it's a classic in the Hurricane Murakami world but i would also honestly recommend starting with a wild sheep chase although it is the third book in the rat series i do think you can start with this one um just not dance 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 i don't know why people would start with dance 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 um because this one does lead straight into it um i think this one again really funny really fast-paced really fun great mix of the weird magical realism but also it does take place in our world and is contemporary in that sense um it is one of my favorites so i can't not suggest it and as for my contemporary readers i am obviously going to suggest South of the Border, West of the Sun. I definitely think this is one that people don't necessarily gravitate towards, but it was my favorite of his contemporary novels, and I think it had just some of the most interesting characters and the most interesting plot, and it's also very, very short. So if you're a fan of contemporary novels and short books, I would definitely suggest this one. But even though I was the big, biggest fan of it, I do think Norwegian Wood is a good place to start with his contemporary books, maybe after South of the Border, West of the Sun, because this is big basically contemporary up until the last page. So I do think this is a really good stepping stone into Haruki Murakami if you want mostly contemporary with just a tiny teensy little grain of sand of magical realism. I do think this is a good place to start. I know I don't like it that much but I do think this is a good place to start. And I have one more book and this is for anyone. I think anyone could start with this book and really really enjoy it and that is The Colorless Sakura Tazaki. I think this book is perfect for getting into Haruki Murakami because again it is mostly contemporary but it has some of his weird wacky magical realism. I think it is a perfect blend of his two types of novels. Um, so I really highly recommend this one. I do think the ending is frustrating as hell but a lot of his endings are um, and I think you get a really really good taste for his writing and his style and his characters because um, Sakura Tazaki is a classic Haruki Murakami character and if you don't like him you're not gonna like any of his characters. Um, so I think anyone could pick up this book and really really enjoy it. And now I'm going to get on into the books that I do not suggest starting with and that is these three. <laughs> Besides Dance Dance Dance, I, again, I don't know why anyone would start with Dance Dance Dance. Also, like, After Dark. I see people trying to start with After Dark all the time, and I don't know why. Um, it just, Dance 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 is the fourth book in a series, and After Dark is just, like, the weirdest book ever. But I'm, all, I'm going to stick with these three. I don't think, again, I read this way too early in my career, so that's why I'm putting it on this list. So I don't think other people should read it 
really, really early because again, I feel like I need to reread it because I just didn't understand what I was reading. Although it was my first, I don't recommend starting with Wind Up Bird Chronicle. I think this could turn a lot of people away from Hergu Murakami because although I really enjoyed it, I really like weird fucked up books. This book is really fucked up. Um, so I mean, unless you know that you like that kind of stuff, I feel like this might actually honestly turn a lot of people away from Hercule Murakami, so I don't really suggest starting with this. And I don't suggest- I see a lot of people starting with this book too and I don't know why. I don't suggest starting with 1Q84 because it is really slow in the beginning. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the first part of this book, which is 400 pages, probably up until page 500, is really slow. Um, so I don't know how you would make it through. I mean, I'm a Haruki Murakami enthusiast and I almost DNF'd this book. Like, it is so slow in the beginning. It's worth it after you get through it. But the only thing that kept me reading those first 500 pages is his writing style that I love so much. Um, so I don't suggest starting with this one just because of how slow it does start. But anyways, those are my recommendations. I Again, I always suggest people to be a little bit older when reading Haruki Murakami. I don't care if you were seven years old when you first read his first book ever. I don't give a shit. Um, I think these books are very graphic sexually and violence wise. Um, and they just, I don't think they can be enjoyed by people who are a lot younger. Um, so I'd say like 17, 18 maybe try reading it. Um, but because I think anything younger than that, I mean, it's, they're, they're, they're very graphic. And again, I don't think you could enjoy them if you're not a little bit older. Considering all of his books follow a character who is like in their 30s, I don't think a 16 and lower year old can relate to a character like that and all of the struggles that they usually are going through. Um, but that is my opinion. I don't need 500 comments telling me that I'm wrong. Thanks. But anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely leave down in the comments below um, what your favorite Hukumi Murakami book is and get a discussion started um, with all of the newbies who are probably watching this video. Um, and I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!